You have just dialed in live to the center of the grilling universe. That's right, it's red hot and ready. And today, this little piggy's going to market. We're grilling up some pig ribs. That's right, big fat sour ribs. The kind that gets stuck in your throat, and you gotta call someone you don't know to help you out. And where there's smoke, there is fire. Today in the backyard, we're gonna be talking about fuel and ignition, sparking it up. And while she's sparking it up, we're calling 911 because the heat on these Vietnamese ribs is gonna be hot enough to burn the hair off your. Hi, I'm John Pritchard. I'll tell you about pigs. What do you want to know about pigs, man? Pigs are a dirty animal. Okay, guys, we're back. We're doing some ribs. But first, I just got to say, back off, the sow is mine. And uh, then we're just going to be cutting into this. We want to portion this down nicely so that uh, it's going to fit on the grill without any sort of awkward moments. I think that should probably do it. Okay, we got some water boiling over here. This actually isn't going to be your Asian style rib because uh, I haven't told you about them yet. Okay, but what we really want to be doing here is making sure that these babies are partially cooked before they're heading out to the grill, right? Okay, so we're throwing them to a boiling cauldron of sulfuric acid. This should probably tenderize the meat just slightly, okay? Gonna add a bit of water, a lot of salt, and actually there's no sulfuric acid in this. Actually guys, seriously, this is just a boiling cauldron of uh, dead carcasses, okay? What do you want to know about pigs, man? They're just as soon to eat you as look at you. You throw a body in a pen with five, five, six pigs, by morning there's nothing left, man. Nothing left. Oh my God. Okay, in all seriousness, guys, what we're doing is we're gonna cook these down just a little bit because when we get them on the grill, we're cooking at high heat, right? Like the fires of Hades coming up there lapping at these bones, right? We want them to be partially cooked. They're on there very quickly. Get a brown exterior, boom, off. Okay, let's move over here. We're talking Vietnamese ribs, right? The Ho Chi Minh rib. This here is soya sauce, okay? Everybody knows about that. What do you want to know about it? Soya is sauce, okay? We got chili peppers here. Normally we'd use Thai peppers, but they're very hot. So we're just gonna go with these jalapenos in there. They're very mild. Yeah, we're just last them. That's about four or five of them, okay? We got some cilantro, right? Dean, check that out, right? Yeah, I'm gonna toss that in. That's a very pungent spice. Jesus. Yeah, these are a little bit hot, okay? Got about two, two of these shallots going in here now. We got a bunch of lemongrass. This is the kind of grass that grows in Asia a lot. And it smells like lemon, right? So they call it lemongrass. Get away for that, Dean. What do you think? Hmm? You're not close enough to smell it, man. Yeah. What did I tell you? Dean sniffs a lot of coke, so he's probably not going to be able to tell anyway. Just remember, while I'm gone, the bees are karma. I'm going to be with one with the bees. Okay. So we got about an inch of ginger chopped up there. Keep going. We got some, a tablespoon of coriander seeds. Coriander seeds are the seed associated with this green leafy thing that I just threw in there a second ago, okay? But totally different flavor. It's got a real sort of lemony, peppery sort of vibe going on. I'm gonna sort of toss that in there. I got some lime juice here. That's gonna break down the fibers of the meat. The flip side to that is you make bacon, you make pork chops, you got tenderloins, you got baby back ribs. And those are all good. We got a little bit of yeah, that's garlic. That's what we need. And what this is going to do is going to prevent your pork from developing a yeast infection. Okay? We're going to spin this around. Throw your hands right inside. And what we need to do, actually, is portion up a little bit of this pig to go on the grill. The pig is good, but it has to, has to be controlled. You know, you have to control the pigs. A 700-pound pig is a difficult animal to control. No, 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 no. No, yelling at them doesn't work. i show them a little force, man. You just gotta, you know, you let them know who's boss. Okay, so 
grab the finest instrument that you have and You like big pieces of ribs or small pieces of ribs? Well, big. Okay. That's about ready. We're just going to toss this in here. We're going to add a little bit of oil. We got some sesame oil and fish sauce, okay? Fish sauce is a sauce made from the stinking corpses of dead fish that have been fermented in big barrels in the Middle East. No. Actually, they probably do it in the Middle East too, but it's mostly done in Asia. But given times as they are, right? You feed them on a regular basis, you clean up after them, then you kill them. You eviscerate them, you eat them. That's the picture here for man. All you need is a ball peen hammer and a good pair of shoes. Okay, tossing this up. When we come back, we're gonna move on to something else that requires a lot more physical strength and endurance to produce. Cracker, it's curtains for you, Cracker. Come on back, come on back. We'll do a little cooking, okay? Ever wonder what sets John apart from the Neanderthals? The ability to start a fire is what it all comes down to. And ever since the first caveman cooked the first slab of dinosaur over an open flame for his cave lady, fire has been an essential part of life. Now there are lots of ways to start a fire, obviously some are more effective than others, but today we're going to show you how to start your barbecue without using the lighter fluid. So stick around because I'm going to light your fire. Okay guys, we're back and we're talking about pork ribs today, okay? We got a couple different recipes. What? I thought so. Barb. What's with all these flies in here, man? Look, I'll make it look ridiculous, but I won't make it look stupid. Oh. <laughs> okay guys, we're back. We're talking about pork ribs today, okay? We're gonna do a couple different kinds of recipes that are gonna turn you on. I hope it doesn't turn you on, man. Let's go back. Thanks, man. I promise you're not gonna make me look stupid, huh? <laughs> okay guys, check this out. This pig's cooking away just fine, okay? We're cooking it very slow because if you boil it too fast, it's gonna make a tough pig. And what we don't need on the set is a tough pig, right? You'd know all about that cracker, wouldn't you? That's right. Okay, this is still gonna take a little while longer, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to discuss something that's of great concern to me, and that's the fact that 95% of the population doesn't get enough lipids, right? What lipids are, is are the good fat that we need. And also like good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, right? And if you eat an ounce of peanuts every day, five times a week, that is, your chances of having a heart attack are cut in half. So if you're gonna be exerting yourself in anything like strenuous butchery of carnivores or herbivores, you'd be wanting to eat some peanuts. So sit back, Relax and watch me eat some peanuts. Mm. Okay, you should be ready now. At this point, you want to find yourself some kind of... Yeah, what are you looking at? At this point, you want to find yourself some kind of bowl or something to put them in. Like this. Okay, these are about ready to go. We're going to take them out, season them up, and we're going to put them on our rotisserie, right? These are going to be fantastic. Because I'm the barbecue master. Yeah. Okay, so when we come back, as I said, we're throwing those on the rotisserie. We got our spicy Vietnamese style ribs. And I'll be eating more peanuts up back, so come on back, y'all. Today in the backyard, we're investigating fuel and ignition. The first thing that we're gonna do is show you how to light a charcoal barbecue. Now there's two ways to light a charcoal barbecue. Basically with liquid fire starter and without liquid fire starter. I don't know about you, but I don't really like the taste of liquid fire starter in my meat. So I'm gonna show you one way that you don't have to use that. Thank you. Now, what you first want to do is take your grill off, and now you've got your bare coals. Everyone's got one of these at home. All it is is a juice tin. Okay, you're going to take the top off and the bottom off so it's hollow. 
Next thing that you're going to do is just twist it down into your charcoal, like so. Now, you're going to take some newspaper, shove it down into the tin, top it off with a couple of extra pieces of charcoal. You want to put as much charcoal on top as you can. And now we're going to light our newspaper. Woo! Let's get this fire started. So the newspaper is going to burn down. The juice can acts as a chimney, pushing the hot air and flames up to the top, lighting the top coals on fire. Okay, it looks like we have it burning pretty nicely. It's going to take about 15 minutes and then we're ready to get your barbecue going. Time traveling. All right, it looks like we're ready to remove our juice tin. You want to grab it with a nice pair of tongs. Any, you know, healthy adult relationship, you know, the tong is used. Dirty, dirty boys. Oh, suddenly I feel very awkward and uncomfortable. Um, tongs are a complicated system of pulleys, wires, and cantilevers that help you pick up and put down food. Uh, back to you, Melissa. Be very careful because it's very hot. And remove it very carefully. Put the tin in a safe place away from you. And now it's time to take our lit coals and disperse them over the unlit coals. And this will cause the unlit coals to ignite. And before long, you're ready to barbecue. It's all about the meat. So if you can't get enough of that liquid fire starter, you can still use that to light your barbecue without getting that nasty taste in your meat. One way to do it is to grab a mason jar and a couple of coal briquettes, drop them in the mason jar. Now you have your liquid fire starter. You're going to squirt that in there and you want it to be about a half an inch deep from the bottom of the jar. All right, once you have enough, you're going to pop the lid on it. Twist it up nice and tight. So you're going to want to leave this overnight and what's actually going to happen is the coals are going to absorb that liquid fire starter. And tomorrow you're going to shove these coals in with the unlit coals and that's going to be enough to start a nice fire. And then you're going to watch it burn, baby, burn. Back off, the sow is mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Okay guys, we're back. We're at the grill. It's the Adam's Rib episode. Remember, women owe us one. Get out of my kitchen. Okay, let's move on over here. We got our Vietnamese style pork ribs, okay? We're gonna throw them right on. I'm gonna give them a little bit of a base here with some oil. Actually, it's probably enough sesame oil on there as it is, okay? So let's just fly these puppies straight on. Ooh, these are gonna be good, man. Okay guys, these ribs are not going to be quite as tender as the slow cooked variety that we've done before. But what they lack in texture, they're going to more than make up for in flavoring. Okay, these are sort of a Pacific Rim flavor. You got the sweet, you got the tangy, you got the salty, you got the hot bite of the chili peppers. These are going to be amazing. And you're just going to be able to chew all that meat off each one of those ribs and you're not going to be able to get enough. I'm going to get my hands on some of those. Okay, we got a rotisserie here. You've probably never seen this technique before, but what we're going to do is we're going to slide our pork ribs right onto this puppy. I'm gonna leave this in place. Simple stuff, man, simple. Just gotta take this, slide them straight on, okay? Bring this one down, attach it to this little sheath at the bottom, and just keep threading them in. Very simple. These have been pre-blanched, so you know they're not gonna to take too long on the grill. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna base them with a little bit of lemon juice and olive oil. A little salt and pepper, too. And while these are turning around on the rotisserie, the ribs underneath them will be basted with even more pork fat, okay? And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the fat, right? Looking for that big fat piece of pork to be basting the little riblets underneath. Okay, slide this on. That's going to hold it in place. Thread it into our electric rotisserie over here. You can pick these up anywhere, man. This one is particularly good. So, here we go. What I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to slide this further down, right? We want it to base these other ribs. OK, 
Okay, we're gonna shut this down for a little bit. That's not gonna take more than 20 minutes or so to cook these puppies up. You just have to turn the bottom ribs once, and obviously the other ones are turning for themselves, right? So we're just gonna leave them alone. I'll try. Okay, guys, with our Asian-style ribs, we're gonna make a little bit of starch, okay? In this case, it's gonna be a flatbread. We're gonna season it up with some chilies, some garlic, some cilantro, and then we're gonna dust it off, finish it off, with a little bit of sesame oil, okay? That's gonna keep it off the grill, but it's also gonna to contribute to that great Asian flavor that we've been looking at. Man, this is gonna be sweet. It's not gonna take very long at all on the grill. Just gonna knead these ingredients in. Just fold them in. But by doing this, remember that you're working the glutens in this starch, okay? So this is gonna be very difficult to roll out immediately after. So what you should do is maybe let it rest for 15, 20 minutes before you roll out. But in this case, we're gonna to try to forge straight ahead. I'll show, you, uh, I'll show you exactly what happens when you do that. Okay, we got these things nicely worked into the center. Doesn't have to be perfect, it ain't rocket science, man. Take one piece off. Yeah, this is very tight. We'll see what happens. If it's not gonna roll out right away, we'll come back to it later, right? Got plenty of time, this is a two hour program. Make a disc out of it first. And then roll it forward. Rolling the corners out. And as promised, this is too tight to roll out, okay? We can keep pulling at it and pulling at it, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna, gonna move right back into that same position. Watch this. Check that out. The amazing elastic dough. Okay, Let's throw that in here. Let it sit for a minute, it's not gonna be any problem in a few. So let's get busy on our basting for our ribs that we have on the rotisserie, okay? These are very basic ribs, okay? We've just blanched them off in some salted water. So we do need to add a little bit of flavor to them, okay? As good as they are, we want a little bit of extra zing. In this case, it's toma tomatoes. Got these here yellow tomatoes. They smell just like lemons, but you know what I'm saying. Some extra virgin olive oil. Equal parts, really. Maybe, perhaps, just a little bit more of the extra virgin olive oil. Got about half a cup of that, and about a third of a cup of the lemon juice. Let's throw some salt in here. Some cracked black pepper. We're gonna pop this baby open. Let's slow this down for a second here. Just give them a little bit. Stir it up to make sure that you get the lemon juice as well, because that'll be stuck to the bottom. Not so much stuck to the bottom as the oil is going to be floating, suspended on top of the lemon juice, okay? Don't worry about those flames. Those are gonna go down in two seconds. No big deal. Okay, let's check out our other ribs here. These are coming along perfectly. Look at that. Beautiful dark brown exterior. A little bit of char, that's not such a bad thing, okay? That hasn't happened from the flames, that's just been a lot of heat. And that's how we're cooking these. We're cooking these fairly high. Crank our turner back on, our rotisserie that is, and I'm just gonna sit here now and wait for my dough, okay? Hey Cracker, what time is it? Time traveling. Oh baby, how do you like your ribs? Oh my God, how embarrassing. Mm. Porky, meaty, or just plain full of bone? Oh my god. <laughs> He's a sick, fist and sick man. Okay guys, this is relaxed for a little bit, and this is rolling out just fine now, look at that. Still a little bit tight, but it's gonna be fine. It ain't pretty, but it's gonna taste fantastic. Okay, there's one, go off to the side. And do this one similarly. If you get too anxious to do this, it's just gonna tighten up on you again and start shrinking all up again. But I think we've managed to come in at the right time. Another couple minutes would have been better, but that's all good. We're gonna brush this down with a little bit of sesame oil. Another really fantastic Asian flavor. Not only is it gonna flavor it, it's gonna keep it off the grill, right? It's gonna keep it from sticking. 
But judging by the way this show's going, you know, anything could happen, right? Make sure you have a nice clean grill to throw this onto. A little bit of salt too. And straight on. Okay. Okay, we're gonna close this down. This is gonna be just a few minutes, okay? When we come back, we're gonna be plating it up and showing you a couple new twists on some old familiar favorites. Man, oh man, these pigs are a pop and these are ready to come off right now, okay? Our Vietnamese style ribs. Mm, that looks great, John. These looks are like you've been great. cooking up a little fuel of your own. Well, you know, pig does a body good. Mm. Or a little pork does a body good. Can I help get these ready for you? Sure, sure. You know what you got there? Parsley? That's a little cilantro, actually, Chinese parsley, yeah. It's cilantro. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, I was right, good for me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna put a little parsley in here, a little bit of color. I'm gonna throw John's nuts in the bowl. It's better than putting them in a vise. I feel bad that you know that. <laughs> You'll see, that's a very interesting story. That we don't wanna hear. Let's try the food. Okay, well, why don't you toss these up? I'm just gonna throw this on for a little something later on, okay? I feel like I wanna use it. I remember I had one of these once when I was very small, but it seemed a lot bigger then. Now it seems like it's just about right. Oh my God, how embarrassing. John, these look amazing. Are you ready to taste test your own meat? Better than somebody else now, isn't it? <laughs> Let's go. Mm. What's the verdict? Super sexy. And that's because we are red hot and ready. Go home with Smoky Good Eats.